Bear with me, just making some minor uh, late breaking adjustments. I'll be right with you. I could just uh, find my other pen, we'd be ready to roll. Got to make sure that the meter of the poem is absolutely correct for you guys. Okay, we're going to go with it. Did you ever think that someday you might uh, have the chance to actually name your own dinosaur? Would that not be cool that you make this really neat discovery and you happen to be the scientist lucky enough to either individually or as part of a team be the one to come up with a name for a dinosaur? Well, that's today's topic. Thank you for watching. This is Mr. Mike for the Mechanicsburg Learning Center with uh, episode 77 of Mr. Mike's Dino a Day. Today we're going to talk about a dinosaur. I'm not going to mention the name quite yet. I want to give you a little bit of setup first. So here you are. You're a paleontologist. You've studied all your life and you've come across uh, many interesting uh, species, many interesting bones. You've traveled to exotic places and best of all, you have now found something or you've been given the opportunity to name something. Maybe you didn't find it, maybe a colleague of yours found it, but whatever. And now you are tasked with coming up with a name. Now, let's think about this. Let's be realistic here. If you're going to come up with a name of a dinosaur, you want it to be something that conjures up the imagination of the public. You want folks that hear the name to go, oh, wow, that sounds interesting. You want people to maybe get some sort of an idea of what the animal is like by the name. And you want, if you want to be, uh, continue to do your job, you need to have people to help you pay for all these things. You need funding. You need people to underwrite your trips. You need folks to help out and all the costs associated with you going out and digging up bones. So it's a good thing if the public gets to be told about the dinosaur. And it's really helpful when the media gets beha behind a dinosaur. Uh, for example, if you discovered the Velociraptor and you gave it the name, that's wonderful. But until it became part of a movie, not many people knew the name of Velociraptor. Everyone was familiar with T-Rex. Now, let's stop at T-Rex for a minute. The name is not T-Rex. It is Tyrannosaurus. That's its uh, genus name. And then the species name is Rex, lowercase r-e-x. The genus name, name Tyrannosaurus means tyrant lizard. Rex means king, tyrant lizard king. What a fantastic, easy to pronounce, mind-blowing and imaginative name for a dinosaur. Very helpful. Now, Let's talk about another, the opposite. Let's say you come up with a very difficult name. You named it after a particular person, and you decided that this gentleman or woman needed some recognition, so you decided to name a dinosaur after it. And let's say you called it Pietnitskisaurus. Well, that doesn't quite roll off the tongue, like T-Rex or Tyrannosaurus or Stegosaurus or Triceratops. Pietnitskisaurus, using it as an, as an example, I love the dinosaur, but it's not the easiest one in the world to pronounce. So, if you had the chance to name a dinosaur, what would you do? That's the subject of today's Dino a Day. Now, the name of this particular animal has three letters. Only three letters. How tough can it be? It is among the shortest dinosaur names ever. We have talked about the uh, dinosaur May. May uh, had three letters. May was episode 40, and it was M-E-I, May, pronounced May. Three letters. There's also a dinosaur called Col, K-O-L, three letters. Then you have the opposite end of the spectrum, Micropachycephalosaurus. Imagine trying to fit that one on a name card. Hi, my name is Micropachys Evelosaurus. You'd need uh, a couple of cards just to accomplish that if you were going to some sort of business mixer. Anyway, 
So you got May and Cole, and today, ZB. Z-B-Y. Might not be the easiest thing to spell, but once you hear it once or twice, you'll get it. The letter Z, followed by B-Y, pronounced ZB. Why did they name the animal ZB? Well, it was named after Georges Zbizewski. Georges Zbizewski. He was a, uh, a Russian paleontologist who did a lot of studying in Portugal, became uh, very popular, very famous, and in his honor, if, you're, if you listen closely to his last name, I'll say it again, Georges Zbizewski, ZB. They shortened it to ZB because you can you imagine having a dinosaur named after Georges called Zbizewski Saurus? Forget about it. If you're a reporter for the local TV station and you had just found this wonderful dinosaur and you were talking to the media about it and the reporter goes, and the new dinosaur's name is Zbizewski. Forget about it. You'll never get on TV again. No one will ever call you because no one would know how to pronounce it. So by making it ZB, it makes it a little bit easier. This animal was a typical sauropod. It wasn't very big. I mean, it wasn't for a sauropod, it wasn't very big. Dinosaur, it's a, big, it's a good size. It was between 52 and 60 feet. But for a sauropod, the, the long neck guys... It was rather medium size, maybe even on the shorter size, because some of these guys grew to 70, 80, 90, 100 feet, 100 feet, maybe even 110, 120 feet long. So ZB wasn't very big, but that's not why I'm talking about it today, is it? <clears throat> I'm talking about it because it has such a short, easy to say name. So it's a sauropod, lived about 157 to 152 million years ago. It was uh, herbivorous. Uh, it looked like, a, you know, like your typical sauropod, long neck, big legs, short tail. It may have resembled uh, Brachiosaurus a little bit, or it could have looked more like a Patasaurus. Uh, there's not really a lot of artwork on it, and there's certainly not a lot of ZB toy dinosaurs to pick up at your local toy store. But at any rate, it was quadrupedal, walked on all fours, uh, ate plants. Uh, the only thing distinctive about it that I could find now, the interesting thing is you do research on these dinosaurs so we can talk to you about them. And some there's a whole lot of research on, and some the articles are very short, and they're very repetitive. And even when they're repetitive, sometimes the information on them uh, doesn't exactly match up with what the last article. So you have to take everything into account when you're uh, doing a report like this. So the thing that makes it a little bit unique is that its teeth were a little bit typical sauropod. Typical sauropod I describe as having... Uh, pencil-like teeth, like a series of thin teeth that were meant to grasp vegetation, pull vegetation, uh, leaves off of trees and plants, and not kill the plant. If you're just stripping the leaves, the plant's going to live on and grow more leaves, so you are not uh, destroying your source of nourishment. So that's what ZB did. Uh, it was discovered in 1996 in West Portugal. Now, it wasn't discovered by George Zbizewski, but it's named in his honor because he did a lot uh, in terms of studying in Portugal and making some finds in Portugal. So it was actually named in 2014 by a group of folks. One of them they uh, refer to as a paleontological rock star, Oct Octavio Matias or Matias. Also, in conjunction with one of his colleagues, Philip Mannion and Paul Upchurch. They were the ones responsible for giving it the really, really easy to pronounce and short three-letter name, ZB. It's related to an animal called Tereosaurus, uh, and for a while they actually thought it was Tereosaurus, but then uh, in 2014 they took a close look at it and said, mm -mm, it's, its own, uh, it's its own genus, first name of the dinosaur name, it's its own genus, and up to now, only one uh, one species has been has been found. So it's called Atlanticus, uh, because where the location that where it was in Portugal overlooked the Atlantic Ocean. It was very picturesque and scenic and beautiful. So uh, about the same time that uh, ZB was around, there was another uh, predatory dinosaur named Torvosaurus. So there's a you know some speculation that Torvosaurus may have been a predator and may have gone after 
uh, ZB. So ZB almost sounds like a nickname, but it is the full name of the dinosaur, only three, three letters, so it's easy to uh, remember. So the poem that I wrote especially for you is about the naming of a dinosaur, and it mentions ZB, of course. So I want to thank you for watching at our new time, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, for the Mechanicsburg Learning Center. I'm Mr. Mike, and the feature is called Mr. Mike's Dino a Day, and today's featured poem is called ZB. Let me put these on to make it look official. ZB. Someday, perhaps, you'll be the one to give a beast a label. You'll want to think a lot and just make sure that you are able to make it self-explanatory, not to be confusing. Otherwise, the public's rapt attention you'll be losing. It has to be descriptive and explicit for consumption. You don't want anyone to end up with a false assumption. So if it's big, consider putting mega in small use micro that's providing that it fits there one great example is the name t-rex which is exciting it's easy to pronounce and plus it's really enlightening the tyrant lizard king now that's a real tough act to follow it conjures up a beast that can take giant bites and then swallow so when you hear zb you might first think that it was tiny with three lone letters in its name you don't think big and spiny. In fact, this beast was nearly 60 feet, which might surprise you. So listen to me closely. I'll reveal more and advise you. It was a sauropod from Portugal. That's where they found it. it got the name from someone whose last name it kind of sounded like it was be tougher, like it would be a tougher one to say. So they decided to give it a short nickname, and that's just what they provided. The gentleman they honored, he was named Georges Zabuski. Zabiski. Zibiski. Z Let's do it this way. I'm going to repeat that line because, it, like I say, you want to put this in front of a dinosaur name? Forget about it. The gentleman they honored, he was named Georges Zibizuski. But dino names are tough enough, and that would be a Dusky. And so they settled on the name ZB, which is much shorter, thus giving a much better shot at every news reporter. So when you name a dinosaur, you really should acknowledge not everyone around has simply breezed their way through college. So make the name straightforward like ZB and you'll be lauded. And best of all, the dinosaur itself will be applauded. ZB, one of uh, the shortest dinosaur names ever to go along with May, three letters, and Cole, three letters. Not to be confused with Micropachycephalosaurus, which is the longest dinosaur name, at least right now. So thanks for watching Mr. Mike's Dino a Day segment brought to you by the Mechanicsburg Learning Center. I want to thank you for tuning in every day. We will continue to tweak our report times as uh, we roll out of quarantine, and we will keep you informed as to what we're going to do. Uh, most likely we'll be doing this again tomorrow, 1 p.m., but that could change. Uh, if you would like to put in the comment box, when would be a convenient time? It doesn't really matter. You can watch it live. You can always watch it on YouTube. And if you do watch it on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and make sure you watch other episodes. So thanks so much for Mr. Mike saying thank you for watching every day. And remember, when you're naming a dinosaur, just like ZB, make it simple so people can remember it. Have a great day.